Welcome to the Summer Together program from the Worcester Art Museum. Today we'll hear about the armor of knights. As you listen, think about what piece of armor you would want to design. Good morning. Uh, so my name is Neil Borbo. I'm the uh, programming coordinator here at the Worcester Art Museum. And today I am dressed in a reproduction of a medieval suit of armor. Uh, this particular suit is designed from the styles of the 15th century, so sometimes called Gothic style. And it's all up because of all the points and the ridges, including in the decoration of it. And this was not terribly, terribly decorated, because this is kind of a low-end suit. Something suitable for a very basic knight. So I'm not a fancy prince or ward, just a basic knight. The armor is something you have to learn to wear. Uh, requires what we nowadays call conditioning. You have to physically exercise and build up a certain amount of strength, um, but also just getting used to it, putting it on, wearing it, and understanding how it moves and how it works. So when we look at a suit of armor like this, you know, especially if it's on a stand that we have in a museum, we have lots of suits of armor, and you can see, and they can read the signs, and they see that they weigh 45 pounds, 50 pounds, 67 pounds, and so forth. And everybody's like, wow, that looks so heavy. It looks so stiff. Now, of course, they're sitting on stands, and they're made out of a hard material, made out of steel. So they do look just like metal statues for all intents and purposes. Uh, but one of the things you have to look at when you look at the suit of armor are things like the knees and the middle and the elbows. Every place where the plates overlap, they bend and flex because those are located at the joints. So the same places where the body bends and flex, so does the armor. So the armor is not stiff and unmovable. In fact, you very high being movable piece of equipment. Because knights in the 14th and 15th century, when the plate armor was developed, they fought on foot as much as they did on horseback. And you have to be able to move in order to survive. And that's very important to making this suit of armor work. The other feature is the fact that as much as this is hard, it's not just the hardness of the armor, it's the shape of it. The smooth surface of the armor, that helps basically protect you from things like the edge of the sword. It should glance right off slide right off. So it's that shape. It's a deflective, it's a curved surface. That's what helps protect you. And if you're moving around, it makes it so much more difficult for some sword to actually connect with you. So it becomes very protective while you're moving it. And so that's one of the big advantages to be able to move. If I'm planning to fight on foot, the other weapon I'm going to use is this. This is a pollux, and one of my assistants, I'm like a squire or a page, would have this ready for me if I needed it. And you can see this is a fairly hefty piece. This is actually the heaviest weapon that I would use. Um, this one's about 10 pounds. Um, most of the other weapons are significantly lighter than that. And it's got several different aspects to it. It's got an axe, but it's not really as much for chopping as it is really designed for denting. If I hit this nice, flat, even edge against someone else's plate piece, it's going to put a good dent in the armor. So it won't necessarily break through the armor, but if you dent the armor, the armor is worn almost like a second skin. So if you put a dent in the armor, if it's a significant dent, you've dented the person wearing the armor, and they're not going to like that. On the reverse is a hammer face. In much ways, it's also for crushing and damaging the plates. Uh, some of the things, such as the overlapping joints of the elbows and the knees, if a hammer like this were to strike one of those places, if those plates get dented, what will happen is they will stop bending and flexing. Because one of the things you want to think of when you look at a suit of armor, a suit of armor is a muscle-powered machine. All the, basically, mechanism is along the outside. It's an exoskeleton, as we would say nowadays. It's kind of like an insect or a lobster. So if those plates get dented and broken, they won't bend and flex, and that'll stop the mobility, which will make it easier for my enemies to potentially defeat me, or vice versa. This does have a spear point, and it will also have a little spear point on the reverse side of one of the paths for safety reasons. 
Um, and one of the things that you might notice in my armor is that there are certain parts of my body that aren't completely covered. Inside my arms, in my armpit, you see kind of a rusty red color. And that is an arming coat or jacket. And the arm is actually tied to it, sort of slightly padded to cushion so that the plates can be worn directly to it. And the actual parts of the arm, the arms and the legs, are actually tied to that jacket as part of the support. Well, obviously, those places aren't protected by the plates because it's hard to put plates in those places. They eventually figured out how to do it. But it's not always something everybody has. Also, around my middle, down here, I have this. This is male armor, what we nowadays a lot of people call it chain mail, but mail is a more appropriate term. And it's an armor of rings. And one ring is joined four of its neighbors. And this actually is the original armor that knights had worn through much of the Middle Ages. So for a good long time, for hundreds and hundreds of years, they wore this, shirts of it, with a helmet and the shield. But once they figured out how to make more armor out of plates like the helmets, it spread it out all over the body, they did so. And they gradually they covered up the mail and replaced it with the plates. But this armor does have some virtues. It's flexible all over. It's also one of its weaknesses. Uh, whereas this will withstand some crushing impact, this doesn't at all. But it can protect you from being cut, and if it's tightly woven like this, you can barely see the openings in it, it'll keep someone from being able to stab into it. And so that's what that's for. So I have protection. And if I was really a good practice tonight, I should have strips of mail inside my arms and my armpits. But then I wouldn't be able to show you my arm equipment. So, there's that. So after listening to Neil the Knight, what would you design in armor? Would you change up some of the pieces or create a whole suit? Here's a redesign that Neil did of his spalder, which is the protection plate of his shoulder. He made it more rounded on the bottom, which is different than what he was wearing. Next, we have a suit from Gabby. She designed for the Dragon Slayer, made of the scales, horns, and spikes of the dragon. It's fireproof, and she knows it's very sturdy so that her foes could not impale her, which is great. Tell us what you're working on. We'd love to see your suit. You can send it to me at aileennovick at worcesterart.org. There's my address, and thank you for watching. Take care.